pray for your children because the prayers will not expire the prayers will continue being answered even way after we are gone and i thought that that's a very profound thought and soon after hezekiah gets healed the bible says that he receives visitors and these visitors come all the way from babylon and i would start by saying like every typical human being Hezekiah forgets that he was once down and God lifted him up. In fact, when you study the text, you realize that some pride came into Hezekiah and, and he soon forgot the things that God had done to ensure that he had these 15 years that was added to his life. This man, Hezekiah, has not even gotten his footing yet. He is still smarting from the effects of the disease when these visitors come uh, to see him. And the Bible says that when these came from Babylon, he came up from wherever he was and, and started showing these people the treasures of Israel. And I will remind you that it's just in chapter number 19 that King Hezekiah had, you know, broken uh, the golden, the, the serpent, the bronzen serpent that Moses had set up in the wilderness for the healing of the children of Israel. Meaning that the treasures of Israel were still, you know, in possession, well, the, the Israelites were still in possession of such treasures. And it is that this man decides to show the princess uh, from Egypt. Oh, the child of God these people had come to offer them they had come to offer the king their sympathies and it is at this point that the king totally lost it and he was overwhelmed with the thought that people had come all the way from Babylon to see him and I want to say that you know that that's the way some of us behave uh, people revert titles and names and I want to tell a child of God listening to me this afternoon that a successful man, according to me, is the man that only worships God and reverse God, period. Titles, honors, these accolades will come and go, but only God is to be worshipped. Am I speaking to someone this afternoon? Those who God honors may not have the latest ride in town those who god honors may not live in the leafy suburbs of this city those who god honors may not have a proper family tree those who god honors may not have names that people can call but before god they stand as stalwarts of the kingdom of grace and i would say this hallelujah take my titles take my name take my life but give me jesus I must say this quietly that I see the clamor for titles even in the church. People scrambling to be called funny names, elder so and so, you know, and youth leader so and so, youth leader so and so, and Sijui Dikones so and so. And sometimes it gets to a point, and of course, we are approaching the you know, elections, uh, not, not of the country, I mean the church elections, you know, we are in that season. And so there is a scramble for these things. But child of God, I would say that those who love the Lord only need to humble themselves before God. Amen. The Bible says, humble yourself before your creator. God will lift you up when the time is right. Amen. God will lift you up. The king with a lot of pride, I'm still in the courtyard of King Hezekiah, with a lot of pride shows the Babylonians some of the wealth of Israel. In fact, he presents to the Babylonians the artifacts, the treasures that had never been seen by many. Even some of the Israelites had not yet laid their eyes on these things. And the king shows everything everything there was nothing that he spared that he did not bring uh, you know to sight the presence of these uh, strange people the bible says that after the departure of these strange guests 
the prophet Isaiah comes back to the king and he asks three questions. If you noticed with me, he asks three questions. And the king look at the way the king answers these questions. You'll realize that the king was not clear. The king was playing games with the prophet. The three questions that were posed to the king and the king conveniently answers to these are the three questions. What did they say? The strange men that have come to your court here today, what have they said? What did you hear from them? And the second question that the king is asked is, where are they from? Do you understand their source? Do you understand from whence they come? And the third question is, what did they see? Well, if you noticed uh, verse number 14 and 15, the Bible says in verse number 15, let me read that again. It says, when the, the man asked, the prophet asked, what have they seen in your house? And Hezekiah answered and said, all the things that are in my house, they have seen. And there is nothing among my treasures that I have not showed them. They have seen everything. They have seen all the things that I have. They have seen the treasures of Israel. All of it I have shown them. And there is nothing in my estimates that they have not laid their eyes upon. But I will start by saying I have just three points after which we'll come to the moment of prayer. That the first question was what did they say? In which the king decided not to answer. Uh, because there are things that probably the Babylonians had uttered that the king had that were not right and were not sitting well with the dictates of God. There are things probably that they had said like making leagues with the Babylonians that he knew the prophet would not assent to. There are things that he had heard as they were speaking to him that he knows the prophet will not be comfortable with and so the king chooses not to answer this question. And I would start by saying, the child of God, you understand that words are powerful. You understand that the things people say can move things. You understand that there are things people have said about you that have broken you to death. And you are still reeling from the thoughts of that which they said. You know words are powerful. Words are powerful. Because words sometimes are the snare that can hold a man down and destroy them completely. You know that words are powerful that if used well, words can lift a man and make something out of them. You know that words have brought down kingdoms and words have brought the rise of other kingdoms. I would say this, that words can affirm and the same words can make or break an individual. Words that castigate can also break. They also can make. And today, the question I'm asking is, young people who have gathered at New Life Church, what did they say? What did they say? What have you heard from these strange voices that whisper to you? What have they said? What has the devil declared in your hearing? What have you heard? What have you heard? What did they say? What does the devil whisper to the old and to the young alike? What does the devil say about the word of God? What did you hear? Uh, what does the devil say about sexuality? What does the Bible say about your gender? What does he say about music? What does he say about dress and deportment? What have you heard? And what has God said? You see, there is one that God has said, and there is the other, the whispers that comes from the heart of hell, that the devil also allows to come your way. The question is this, what did you hear? What did they say? When they came to visit you the last time, what did they say? And though the king refused to answer this question, I think 
This is a question that every one of us must answer. And today, as the world is tipping towards destruction, it is seem, as it seems that we are plummeting towards an imminent destruction, we ought to answer this question. What have we heard from God and what has the devil said? See, it's all about what the devil says. Started in the Garden of Eden and the devil has always whispered things that have startled children of God. What have you heard? What did they say? Can you answer that question? And I would say this, that one of the many ways uh, that the devil has managed to ensnare many a young people is to blot out the lines that divide the truth and the lie. Uh, he has caused many gray areas to be around the young people that this youth that are gullible would fall to. He has removed the black and white of God's word and have the gray and common in all things. And in this, I would say, the devil has been successful. Because the devil simply says that all music are permissible so long as you put Jesus in one of the lines. Uh, you are getting quiet. The devil has whispered and said all dressing is okay. Because it doesn't matter what God says. Uh, today the maxim is my dress, my choice. And what about God's choice? Today homosexuality is almost gifted. And people are rewarded for being homosexuals. And that is what the devil has done. I was reading uh, an, uh, um, an, you know, some news from one of these international portals and, and they were saying that there was a case not long ago in the U.S. that there were men who refused to identify themselves with the correct gender and so they insisted that it will be unfair to lock them with men when they think they are not men. Can you understand that madness? And because of that, they were locked in a women's facility. And before long, the brothers impregnated a few. Eh? <laughs> For long, there were ladies who were heavy, and they were they had to be transferred from the, the the you know the female facility to the male facility, because eventually, even their nature cannot agree to that setting. But today, the devil says, "Don't talk about gender." I'm I'm told that lately. You don't say that women get pregnant, but you say persons with ability to carry a child. What nonsense has the world got into? All these kinds of madness are permissible today because the devil has blotted out the black and white of God's word. God says this man does this. The devil introduces something that will negate all that God uh, says. The unfortunate bit is that the pulpit is silent about these things. And I pray that men of honor, those who God has called, must rise up and pronounce things right. Today we can't afford to have gray areas when God has made it clear that a judgment is looming upon the surface of the planet. That Jesus is coming soon and soon there will be a divide. We can't keep quiet. We can't keep quiet when it seems like issues of integrity are eating even members of the church. We can't keep quiet. We can't keep quiet when adultery and prostitution seems glorified in every way. We can't keep quiet. We can't keep quiet when the young dishonor their parents and bring curses on themselves. We can't keep quiet. It has to be very clear. Thus says the Lord. The Bible says, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. That's the gospel. Fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of judgment has come. This is not a time for self-glorification. The way we do in social media. Taking a thousand photos and saving the best one for the world. Eh? This is not the time for that. This is not the time. This is the time where God calls us to fear him. And we should not care 
about all these other things but only that which God you know has asked us to do you know Hezekiah had just posted on Instagram rolling with the big wigs when Isaiah shows up are you with me <laughs> eh? he had been enthralled by all this going around taking photos and showing the the the, the strangers you know the treasures that God has given him am I speaking to someone this afternoon how we have exposed some treasures shown the world things they ought not to see but we have shown the world without care and while you're rolling with the big wigs the Lord is asking this question what have they said what did they say concerning your post on Twitter and Facebook what did they say what did they say concerning your picture you put the 1000th one and uh, you got thousands of likes and what did they say in the comment section what have they said about you because you see one thing uh, that the prophet is telling the king is this that what they said about you they are soon coming to take it and you've just exposed the underbelly of the kingdom they are coming for it when you read down he tells the, the the king that these people have seen the treasures they are just going to prepare and come for the treasures do you know that what they have said about you is actually their plan to take it away from you my second thought from this passage is the question and where are they coming from and, uh, the king refused to answer what they said but because he probably feared what the prophet would have said uh, he refused to answer that but when the king is asked where they came from it seems to me I, I, I wish I was in the meeting that day but it seems to me that the king is excited about this and and the Bible says they came from a far country even from Babylon can, can you read that again in your Bible? The text says they came from a far country. That's sufficient. That's enough. But he stretches it further and says, even from Babylon. Prophet, if you do not know, Babylon is the place. Come all the way, very far from Babylon. Came from Babylon. King, uh, prophet rather. They came from abroad. Came all the way cross the seas to come and see me and and and, and you know uh, pray for me and, and and meet me they came all the way imagine they came all the way from babylon uh, i'm amazed sometimes at how we behave when we see folks from these far away countries yeah uh, it's it's just quiet when i'm traveling going home from nairobi but wait until i'm jetting in from some foreign nation hmm? then the whole world will know that i am from another country and uh, it will be well documented eh? i've come from amazing places now i want to say that uh, i'm amazed at how people get excited with very small things very very small things surface deep things uh, excite people so much and so what if the dressing style is from america and it doesn't honor god so what so what if the trending music is from europe so what does that make it right so what if the dressing style is from wherever so what so what if the proposition is coming from a high-ranking uh, government official so what so what if they have cvs that look like encyclopedias so what so what the question the apostles have asked in the bible is who ought we to obey god or man the king 
is excited that these people came from very far. I, I, I think the king thought that because they came from far, then now, you know, he needed to, 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 to walk them around and to show them things they ought not to see. Simply because they came from afar. Maybe he thought that the distance was his safety. And since they are coming from afar, they can't make a journey back to, to take it away from him. Maybe he thought that it was safe because they are going very far. Or maybe it was just pride and he was caught in the moment. And he just wanted to exalt human beings. And I would say this church, lest we forget that God created man from mud. The Bible says in Genesis 2 and verse number 7 that he took the dust and then after he had formed man, he breathed in the man the breath of life. One professor said he kissed man into life. But whatsoever it is, man still remains a creature. Am I speaking to someone? And we cannot exalt man in the place of God. So if a man occupies somewhere in your heart, wipe that mud from the throne of your heart and let Jesus sit there. Am I speaking to someone? C.S. Lewis says that human history is the long, terrible story of man trying to find something other than God which will make him happy. And unfortunately, nothing can make you happy. Only God can fulfill you. Amen? No one can match the God whom we worship. Uh, the great I am, the almighty, Adonai, the one true God, the one who is to be magnified, and he alone is to be exalted. The Bible says that all the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord and who became his counselor? Or who has first given to God that it might be paid back to him again? To the only wise God, through Jesus, be glory forever and ever. The Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. And God, who is the Father of lights, by his word, established this planet by his word he created life the bible introduces us to god in a powerful way in genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1 he comes to the scene and declares let there be light and there was light the bible says in that beginning god pronounced light and light came forth before he created the vessels to hold light that's the god i'm talking about he alone must be worshipped the father of lights when Job was contending with him in chapter 38, he comes and, and he speaks to Job. I like, I like chapter 38 of the book of Job. You should read it sometimes. All the way to 41, you would, you would appreciate this text. He comes to Job and he asks Job this question. He tells Job, guard yourself as a man. Tie your belt. Let's talk. And, 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 and he asks Job such questions. Where was thou? When I laid the foundations of the earth. Mm. Declare if you have understanding. Who has laid the measures thereof if you know. And who has stretched the lines upon it. Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened. And who laid the cornerstone thereof. When the morning stars sung together. And all the sons of God shouted for joy. Or who has shut up the sea with doors. When it breaks forth, as it had issued out of the womb, have the gates of death been opened unto thee? Or have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Have you perceived the breath of the earth? Declare if you know it all. Declare. You know, somewhere in chapter 38, he tells Job a very interesting thing. That are you there when the ravens, the nestlings of the ravens, cry out to me and I feed them? Are you there? I looked that up and it's very interesting, uh, children of God, that when the, uh, you know, ravens have hatched their eggs, most of the time they forget about their nests. 
And so God takes up. God takes up. Immediately Mother Raven leaves the nest. God takes up. And you know how God does it? You know, it's in the, these small, small things that you see the glory of God. Uh, you can't tell me that's chance. No, this is creation at its best. Amen? The Bible, uh, the, 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 the scientists will tell you that the baby raven or the nestlings of the raven have been given beautiful beaks that look like flowers. And so when they cry out to God and open their beaks, the bees the insects find their way into that flower and the ravens are kept alive. And God is asking Job, where are you when I'm feeding the ravens? Where are you? So if, if man cannot do even the little things like that, how do you honor them more than God? How do you worship them more than God? You see, I, I was looking at the Message Bible, and the Message Bible actually puts it well. That uh, listen to this: the Bible says, uh, the, 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 "Then Isaiah asks, what have they seen?" And and the Message Bible says that this is how Hezekiah responds. Everything said Hezekiah, there isn't anything I didn't show them. In fact, according to the Message Bible. I gave them a grand tour. <laughs> I like certain translations. I gave them a grand tour. I took them round in a powerful way. I mean, these are ambassadors from, from Babylon. I showed them things. And I showed them things in style. So he said they have seen everything. I've seen everything. Not only the things that he possessed at that time but also the things he was likely to possess because of the things he possessed at that time and everything was exposed uh, what have they seen is the question I ask this afternoon what have they seen now will answer and say this without Jesus the things that they have seen is how you linger long on pornography as you watch perverseness they have seen that uh, they have seen how you are practicing deceit and planning for mega corruptions they have seen that they have seen your nakedness and are having plans for it they have seen that they have seen your lack of Bible study and lack of the love for the things of God. They have seen that. And to the youth, they have seen how you dishonor your parent. The Bible says, honor your father and mother that your days may be long. But they have seen you spiting the very people who brought you to life. They have seen. The devil has noted that. They have seen that in spite of their efforts to make you something, you are slowly but surely ruining that which they are trying to build. They have seen that. They have seen the company that you keep in school. They have seen your friends. They know who you hang with. They, they know who you are inclined to talk to. They understand this and it's just a matter of time and they are coming back to bring you down. They have seen everything. They have seen your library and the books that you keep and the music that you listen to. Uh, the things that they have seen, they know they are planning for it. And they are soon coming back for it. And I must say this as I pray, children of God. That it doesn't matter what they have seen. And it doesn't matter what they have whispered in your ears. It doesn't matter what you have shown them. It doesn't matter where they are coming from. But if you take Jesus in your life, am I speaking to someone? If Jesus comes and Jesus is enthroned, if Jesus is in your life, then when they come back with their battalions, you, child of God, will be secure. Am I speaking to someone? All you need to do is to allow Jesus in. Yes, in the past, you allowed them to glance at this. In the past, you played in their territory. In the past, you touched things you ought not to touch. In the past, you drank things, some substance you ought not to. And they have seen it. They know your weakness. They have exposed you. But you have an opportunity this afternoon to redeem that. And all you need to do 
is to call upon him who has the name above all names and the name of Jesus Christ that is mighty to save. Would you accept Jesus today? Would you accept my friend? Would you accept the Lord of heaven and earth? Would you accept him who is soon to return to meet judgment on this planet? Would you accept the Lord? The things that they have seen has made us, you know, look bad. We have been exposed terribly. Our children have been exposed. Our lifestyles have been exposed. But Jesus is here to remedy that if only you would accept him. And so I want to make one passionate call this afternoon. Is there anyone out there who knows that he has had things he ought not to have had? And the enemy has seen things he ought not to have shown them. And the enemies have come from wherever to mess them up. And today they want liberation. I want to give you a minute to come so that we can pray together with you. Is there anyone who wants to come to this Jesus who is so powerful and who loves you so much? Anyone who wants to come? Is there anyone who wants to come? I want to ask the baptismal team to, to come up front as we also invite anyone out there who wants to come for a prayer. You know, it's only prayers that's going to save us. As the rest of us rise on our feet where you are so that we can pray together with you. If you're not planning on coming, I want you to bow your head so that you can start praying for someone. Someone has to make a decision uh, this afternoon and come to the Lord. The enemy has seen it. The enemy has whispered strange things. They have told you you cannot make it. They have told you you are messed. The enemy has told you that your sin cannot leave you, calling you forth to come. Let's shame the devil, even as we give ourselves to Christ. Praise the Lord, those who are coming. Praise the Lord. If you're not intending to come, I ask you to bow your head and start praying because we are wrestling with the enemy now. I want someone to come to Jesus so that we can commit them to the Lord. Is there anyone? The Savior is calling. They have seen, they have whispered strange things. You want liberation today. You want to be free. Come. Is there a soul out there? Thank you. Thank you. Come, come, come. I see movement. Pray, pray, pray for someone. Pray for someone. Ours is to pray that someone can break free from the yoke of the enemy and come to the Lord. Thank you, my sister. Come, come, come. Come. Is there anyone else who wants to join? Come for a prayer. Come for a prayer. There is a God in heaven who loves you in spite of that which has happened in the past. In fact, I preach the gospel of we, me, Jesus, and the angels don't care what you have done in the past because we know what Jesus can do now. What Jesus can do now is what's important he can change you he can refine you he says in isaiah come let us reason together i know your sins i know your problems but i can make you as white as snow yes the devil has seen these things yes the devil has spoken strange things to you but yes jesus can still save you jesus is powerful to save is there anyone else who's coming Is there anyone else who is coming? Or sisters, you can come up so that we can pray together with you. Anyone else who wants this prayer? When the Lord speaks, move. When the Lord speaks, moves. Is there anyone? One more soul for Jesus. One more soul for the Lord. One more soul for the Lord. A time will come when these voices will not be heard pleading for a sinner. A time will come when this will be too late. But while there is still time, while mercy still pleads with the sinner, come, come my friend. You've not gone too far that the Lord cannot save you. You've not gone too low that he can't reach out and extricate you from 
whatever situation you are not a lost case there is a god in heaven who works and he's an expert in redeeming sinners is there anyone who wants to join us one more soul for the kingdom just break free praise god praise god break free and come break free and come break free and come oh how i wish you would have come how i wish you had we would have come how i wish you would have come come how i pray that you come i want those who pray in the church to be praying we just have but a few minutes and i wind this up still pleading with someone to come to jesus he will receive you he will embrace you is a god in heaven who loves people more than anything more than anything he'd rather die than let them go for god loves people more than anything god loves people thank you my sister come come now in 2018 i preached a sermon in one town in kenya and as we were making a call one young woman just before i switched off you know from the microphone and 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 she came up and joined the throng that we were praying with and known to this woman that that was going to be the last appeal he will respond she would respond to and on that tuesday she was all over the newspapers she had been murdered you know the story but she gave her life i can testify that that's a child of god we will meet her in the kingdom for just in the moment when the call came the final hours of her life she gave herself to jesus christ i was there i prayed that day i saw her come to the kingdom and i'm i'm giving an appeal one mighty preacher of the yester years say that the only certain thing about this life is the uncertainty of this life we are not sure of what to make you know after this i as a preacher i'm not always so sure whether i'm going back home this evening for you know how this life is but i have to be prepared that even if today were my last day then i would meet jesus when he comes for when jesus comes the bible says with the trump he will call and the dead in christ will rise break free and come break free and come break free and come I can't I can't plead any longer but I allow me to offer the final prayer and then usher the pastor uh, to give guidance Let's bow down for a prayer My father I do not know what the devil has seen The things he's whispered I have heard But sometimes oh lord in our careless moments we have exposed things that we ought not to to the enemy by lack of prayer and study of your word oh lord we are vulnerable before the devil god we know that he is planning to destroy not only the church but even the world because oh lord we entertain these strangers from strange lands and today we are reeling in all these messes suffering oh lord in the hands of the enemy but we are glad oh god that you still remind us in times such as this to consider you and to allow you oh lord to be the king of our hearts and to enthrone yourself oh lord in our lives to guide and lead us and even to prepare us for your soon return i want to thank you oh lord for those that are getting baptized today and i thank you oh lord for those that are making decisions this afternoon to join this beautiful throng may your name be glorified and may your name be honored Oh Lord I thank thee for this day was meant for but one soul. I'm glad that many have come. We commit them into your able and powerful hands and pray oh God 
that whatever the devil has seen in their lives that he wants to take, may you shield and protect your children from the same. Whatever the devil has whispered in their ears, O oh Lord, may you null it that you may speak the right things, may speak the words of blessings, that you may speak your promises, and you speak hope, O oh Lord, and speak concerning the second advent and the extrication of man from this crust called earth. I ask you in a special way, O oh Lord, that as we continue with our service and even as pastor takes up from here, that your spirit will continue guiding us and leading us into all that is good to the glory of your name. May you speak to our hearts still, O oh Lord. May we make a resolve to honor you above all the things of this life. That Father, as it's recorded in your word, that this is life eternal, that we may only know you in Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I thank you, my friend, because I know you have heard our prayers and you will answer in accordance to your will and to the glory of your marvelous name. For these things we ask in the name that saves, the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and who is our Savior. And may all God's people say, Amen. 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 God bless you.